Hey guys, Lindsay from LNJ here. Today we're gonna to be talking about breeders and what you need to know so you don't get scammed. Adding a new dog to your family is a big decision. They're going to be with you for the next 10 or more years, so it's in your best interest to take time to make sure that your dog is coming from a responsible and reputable dog breeder. Hopefully this video can help you make a well-informed decision when choosing how to go about getting your pup whether that be from choosing the right breeder or adopting. I used to be someone who was really passionate about not buying dogs from people and that rescuing was the only way I viewed as a socially acceptable way to obtain a dog. I even drove a car with magnets all over it talking about rescue dogs. I thought that breeders were all greedy and evil and while some certainly are, which I'll get to later, I began to realize that it isn't so black and white. Blood, sweat, and tears go into breeding and showing dogs. I've seen it firsthand. It is not for the faint of heart, but it is something that is important to be done in order to keep all of these different breeds alive and healthy. The issue isn't with the breeders. The issue is with people breeding dogs strictly for profit. There are four main breeders out there, puppy mills, commercial breeders, backyard breeders, and hobby breeders. We're gonna start with puppy mills. A puppy mill is defined as an establishment that breeds puppies for sale, typically on an intensive basis and in conditions regarded as inhumane. They breed on every heat cycle, starting with the first one, and they do zero health testing. Classic pump and dump. We all know puppy mills are evil, and yet they still seem to exist. Why is that? How are these places remaining operational? Well, puppy mills used to provide puppies to pet stores to make money. After many pet stores were banned from malls, they began selling puppies on websites like eBay, Good Dog, and Craigslist. If you've bought a puppy through one of these websites, the sad reality is that you gave the abuser your money so that that way they can keep operating. And that puppy will be replaced by another puppy living in those awful conditions. Some of these puppy mills create nice looking websites to appear as a reputable breeder and even have social media pages. Yet it's just a smoke screen. There is no important information on these websites like AKC numbers or OFA links. I grew up and lived a lot of my life in Ohio. Ohio is home to the second largest concentration of Amish and Mennonite dog breeders. The first is in Pennsylvania and the third is in Illinois. Ohio is like a puppy mill sandwich and people keep buying from them and supporting people who are directly abusing dogs. They view domesticated dogs as livestock. They do not have the dogs or your best interest in mind. They do not care what happens to you or the puppy after you hand them the money. Some even charge more than ethical breeders do because they know people will pay it. Once the mom of those puppies can no longer produce profitable litters anymore, they will euthanize her or sell her at auction to other breeders hoping to get one more litter out of her. Puppy mills are straight up animal abuse and should be avoided at all costs. Then we have commercial breeders, which are large operations that are inspected by the United States Department of Agriculture and sometimes the AKC. They often have inspections to ensure that local, state, and federal regulations are being followed. These regulations enforce that the animals are being treated humanely with appropriate housing, exercise, proper nutrition, and veterinary care. Also called commercial kennels, these operations often have full-time staff for the care of their dogs. This care is the primary difference between commercial kennels and puppy mills. However, selling puppies is a business for them, and money talks. Health testing dogs costs money. This hurts profit margins for commercial kennels, so most don't do it. It's not unheard of to see well-bred dogs with proper health testing at commercial kennels. It's just rare but better than buying from the Amish. Next, we have backyard breeders. This category of breeders really covers three types of people. Two are unethical in breeding and one is not. Pet parent backyard breeders just really love their dogs and they wanna make more of them. Sometimes they even breed specifically to keep one for themselves. And honestly, 
that part isn't so different from responsible breeders. However, they either don't do any sort of health testing or they're just breeding to a friend's dog and just completely throwing the genetic dice. They aren't necessarily bad people, but they are absolutely partaking in unethical breeding as they could be dealing these puppies a bad hand. Puppies produced by these types of breedings are extremely risky. It's extremely likely that these dogs came from another backyard breeder, a commercial kennel, or even a puppy mill. The second type of backyard breeders are scumbags because they are choosing not to do the right thing. These people know they should be health testing and choose not to. They market on their websites about DNA testing when they haven't actually tested for anything that the parent club recommends. They deliberately lie on their websites and they know they can get away with it because people don't know any better. Their dogs are usually well loved and cared for, which is the bare minimum people should have to offer when it comes to breeding dogs. And they use this as a mask. In reality, they're breeding their dogs because they want to make money, which is often why they don't do the parent club recommended health testing. You often see these in flavor of the month breeds like Frenchies, for example. They crossbreed them with other dogs to get these exotic looks. Oh my god, what is that? Oh my god! What is that? This is a pretty irresponsible form of breeding for many reasons. They even put their own shows on for these so-called exotic breeds, which aren't certified under, well, anything. It's all made up. If I were to make this video into a tier list and the Amish were the lowest of the low, well, these kind of breeders might just be above them, but not by much. The third type is the ethical backyard breeder. This is the person who does everything by the book testing wise, loves their pets, does the research, but does nothing else in the dog world. They do what they can to produce healthy puppies, but they don't have titles or proper AKC paperwork. It's like, you're so close to getting it. You're so close. Before we get into the holy grail of breeders, there are red flags to look for if you're still not sure about the person selling you a dog. Breeding dogs without health testing. Dogs not registered with the AKC. Hiding AKC registration names and or numbers. Not allowing people to see where the puppies are raised. Not allowing people to meet the mother of the puppies. Breeding for color. Charging more for specific colors. Breeding mixed breeds on on purpose. The last group of breeders we have are the true hobby breeders. These are the diamonds in the rough that you're looking for. These are the kinds of breeders I mentioned earlier and should be the ones you support and look for if you do choose to shop for a dog. The hobby is the competition and the preservation of the breed. The hobby is not the breeding of dogs. These breeders are not motivated by money. They breed for a purpose. They health test based on the parent club's recommendations. They compete in confirmation and other dog sports. They care what happens to the dog that you buy from them. They are dog people through and through. Attending dog shows is a great way to learn about different dog breeds and to find a good breeder. There are a lot of red flags you can look out for when trying to find a good breeder, but finding one who wins at dog shows is a great way to avoid some of those red flags. Since we did some red flags, let's do some green flags. These are things you should be looking for when researching breeders. Breed appropriate health testing. Active AKC confirmation shows. Temperament testing. Early neurological stimulation. Socialization and early training. Matching each puppy to the right family. And the breeder will provide support for the life of the dog and beyond. If you're considering purchasing a dog, you'll want to be sure that the dog that you are purchasing is from an American Kennel Club approved breed breeder, which can also be found on their website. These breeders show their dogs in AKC shows and have a proven lineage of dogs under their name. The purpose of dog shows at their core is to evaluate breeding stock for the specific breed. If no one preserved breeds, dogs would be way less cool and have significantly more health issues. When you're purchasing a dog from a reputable breeder, you're getting a dog from someone who cares about the future of that dog. They health test the parents and ensure that they are not passing poor genetics along. When you buy a dog from someone who isn't involved with dog shows, it's like buying a car from someone random on Craigslist. You could get a lemon. You might love that lemon, but you can't love your dogs into being healthy when it comes down to genetics. Now, 
Our own personal dog is a rescue. This isn't to steer you away from doing that. I can write you an endless book on how much I love that dog, but he does have his flaws and he wouldn't be a perfect fit for just any household, which is another thing to be aware of when adopting or shopping for a dog. At the end of the day, it's up to you to decide if the breed of dog is right for you and your family. Otherwise, that could easily lead to someone else adopting the dog that you shopped for. If this comes off as me being on a high horse or holier than thou, it really isn't. I just really love dogs and over the years learning about all of these things has made me really passionate about keeping the bloodlines of these dogs healthy and intact. I hope this video can spread a little more awareness and help people make the right decisions when choosing to bring home a dog. Adopt or shop responsibly. Remember, be the person that your dog thinks that you are, be kind, and I'll see you soon.